everyone. This video is a remake of a replay for ThermalWeb's Facebook Live that occurred on January 24th, 2024. There were some issues with um, the technology, so we are creating a replay remake. So tonight we are making these adorable mini candy heart zipper pouches. And just like candy, it's hard to resist and it's hard to make just one. So you can make as many as you want, all different colors. You could even resize it uh, with the pattern if you resize the pattern on your printer and make them bigger. Um, what's neat is you can do single color. If you wanna have a little more fun and you're making a bunch at one time, you can do multicolor. But tonight we're gonna to make a single color and we're doing a color I don't have up here yet. We're going to do orange. <laughs> the first thing you'll need to do is you will need to go to ThermoWeb's blog and there you will find the template for the Candy Heart Zipper Mini. The link is in the description below. Um, make sure when you print it that your one inch is one inch if you are following these directions as I am explaining here. Like I said, if you want to resize it, you can make it bigger. You just resize it when you're printing, but know that you will use more fabric and your zipper will be longer as well. So keep that in mind. Now I already have this cut out, ready to go. So first thing we need to do is decide our lining and our main fabric. So for tonight, I am doing orange for the main fabric and some pretty yellow for the lining. And I like when I'm cutting these to layer them together. Since I am cutting them by hand, I wanna make sure that my pieces are cut exactly the same. If you're using a, a die cutter, you can cut them individually because the die cuts them out all the same. So we wanna make sure we have it, I fold mine and I'm gonna fold my orange as well. Fold it so that it will fit. Now this heart is just about five inches. So if you do have um, like a charm pack or five inch squares, you can use those as well. They might, the heart might slightly go off the edges of where the pinking shears were, but it's so minuscule, it really, it's doable. Most of the hearts patches I just showed you were made with five inch squares. So let's get our orange ready. And these pouches are great. Um, they hold just enough candy, make them for Valentine gifts and that they're keychains. If you're making them for kids, it's just a little bit bigger. They will love them. If they're anything like my kids, they love keychains. They were asking for keychains as gifts this year. I was waiting for that to cool down. I've got a heat sensitive marker. All right, so then what you'll do is you'll trace the template over your fabric. And you'll cut it out. And I'm gonna pin it to hold the four layers together. Next, you'll need to use your template again to cut out your fleece. Tonight, we are using fusible fleece. It comes in these packages, or you can buy it by the yard if you use it a lot. For tonight, because this is so small, I'm again using scraps. I keep all of my fusible fleece scraps 
in a handy little bin. Never know what you could use them for. These are great for making those key fob keychains. And we'll do the same with the heart. We're going to trace it. The only difference here is like with most of the patterns that I do with this type of material, I cut it down by a quarter of an inch. And I do that so there's not a lot of bulk in the seam. And I actually wanna move this over. Don't wanna waste all that extra over there. If your seams get bulky, especially on something tiny like this, it can be a challenge to turn it right side out and get it pressed and have it lay right, especially with this tight curve. So we're gonna trace this pattern and we're just, when we cut it out, we're just gonna cut it out about a quarter of an inch smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect, just approximate. So first thing I'll do is I'll just cut it out. Then you can see me cut out about a quarter of an inch. So it's about the same size right now. Now, if you so choose, you can measure without having to waste all this as well, if you wanna do a quarter of an inch without the waste. But, all right. So next, it's time to fuse our fleece to the main fabric. So I've chosen the yellow as my lining and the orange is my main. So I'm going to fuse my fleece to the main lining, to the main fabric. And you wanna have the glue side down See how it, look at all that extra we're not gonna have in the seams. It'd be really nice. Okay, so next we're gonna do some cutting. We need to make the pull tab for our zipper pouch. And we also need to cut pieces of our heart so that we can add the zipper. So the pull tab is two and a half inches by three inches. Just gonna cut myself a little piece here. There's the salvages right here and I don't want that so just slightly bigger. I think I need a, a new blade. All right, so we have two and a half inches by three inches. So that's our tab, which we'll iron here in a second. But before we put the cutting away, we need to take one of our main pieces and one of our lining pieces. We're gonna place them together. And on the heart, it shows you the line for cutting. You can use this as a guide or this is essentially, if you look on the roller, two inches down. So just line your two inch with the top of the heart and cut across. Now before I head over to the sewing machine, I need to 
get my zipper ready and my pull tab ready. So we're gonna fold our pull tab along the long edge and make a nice press crease. And then you're gonna fold it in and press and fold the other side in. Kind of give it a crease and then you're gonna fold it together and press it really well so that it keeps its shape. This we will do a top stitch on, on down each side. Next, we're gonna get our zipper ready. Now the zipper I'm using is nine inches. You can see it's extra long. Um, you probably could use a seven inch zipper. Nine inches is what I had on hand, so that's what I'm describing for you today. If you have zipper by the yard, just make sure when you're using it that you have a little bit of wiggle room and you'll cut that off when you're done. So we're gonna have the zipper face up. The lining is going to be face up, zipper face up. Then you're going to take your top piece and put it face down. And that's your little zipper sandwich. I'm going to pin or clip. And then I will, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and give it a stitch. And unfortunately, I do not have the dual screen set up. So you will sit here and look at my adorable donut pin cushion while I go quickly sew this and sew this. So we have our pull tab sewn. We'll just set that off to the side for now. And the bottom half of the front of our pouch. This seam is approximately a scant quarter inch. And we're going to start by pressing the lining open. And then pressing the front. And they line up so beautifully. Next, we'll do the top, and to get that lined up, again, you're going to have your lining face up, zipper face up, and then to know where to put them, I like to kind of line this up. Actually, it'll be this way. So line, see how they kind of, that's where, where they should line up approximately if you were to just slide it right up the zipper, and then Place it right over your lining. Make sure they line up on the both ends. Pin, and then I'm gonna go sew this again.
look at that. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press the lining and then press the front. What we need to do now, just to kind of hold those pieces out and it gives it more of a finished look is we're going to top stitch down each side. Got our pretty top stitch. Now we need to assemble our heart. So before we assemble, we want to make sure our zipper is pulled halfway because if not, it's going to be very difficult to turn it the correct direction. Next, you will take, this is our layer. We will have this on the bottom facing right side up. You'll take your other outside piece, face it down and you'll notice it is slightly smaller than our outside, our back one. And that's because when adding the zipper, we did add a little bit of extra space. Depending on your stitch, yours might be just slightly smaller. It might be perfect sizing. That all really depends on your zipper, which mine being a scant quarter inch makes it just slightly larger which for me, I like because then it gives me a guideline. I only have to follow my upper circle and just ignore the outside circle. So face down, then you're gonna take your lining and your lining will be face up, stick it right on top. You can even sandwich these together first so that they're perfectly together. And then this is where your pull tab comes in. You'll fold it in half and place it behind in between the two outside layers. And I like to have mine sticking out a little bit, that way I know I catch it in the seam. And then we're just going to pin it together. And when you sew your zipper, you might wanna keep this kind of pinned together too. You don't want it to split apart on you. So I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine one more time and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around using my upper one as a guide, not my back, that's a little too big. And you'd lose all of your layers. I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way around and I'll be right back. Here we are. Now I did reinforce 
my stitching, back stitching over the zipper and over the pull tab. So next, grab your scissors that you don't mind using to cut zipper and trim those zipper pieces off. And you can use pinking shears, you can use regular scissors. We are going to trim the excess, so off of the sides. I need to get new pinking shears. Mine are dull, either new or figure out how to sharpen them. We've got the bulk cut off. Now we still need to do a little bit of trimming. I'm looking for my little scissors. Can't find them, so we're gonna use these ones. So, because these ones have a very sharp, these are strictly fabric scissors. We're going to cut off the point. So don't cut off your stitching, but we're gonna Put as little fabric down there as possible. We want to have a nice point. And then we need to cut into here. If we don't cut our curve here, it will not lay flat. It will be all wonky. So using your scissors, you just cut to the seam. Don't cut through the seam. Just create little cuts around the curve. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. Oh, that's I think I need a couple more right here okay all right and it's mainly important on this curve these outer curves are pretty mild so they should be okay so we're going to Turn it right side up now. I'm gonna try to grab that zipper, open it up all the way. And like I said, you can use pinking shears to kind of finish off the edges. You could use a stitch, like an overlock or a zigzag. To me, these are super small um, that you're, you can't even see them when you open the change purse. So it's a personal preference if you want to do that. See how that nice, nice curve we got there? And then you'll just give it a little press. And the last thing we'll do is we'll add a key ring. So that Someone can carry it with their keys. They can put it on their backpack. And there it is. Let me bring out the other one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Next month, I will be um, doing another Facebook Live. It will be February 28th, again, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. We'll be doing towel holders, the kind that you use to hang over your oven door or a drawer handle. So make sure to stick around and keep watching the Facebook page for information on that. Um, since this is strictly on YouTube, I will have a link to the Facebook page as well where you can request to join so you are already there and are notified when these things are happening. And I thank you again. And until next time, happy sewing!